righty. Well, welcome everybody that's came, and uh, we'll get started here by singing a, a hymn together. Hymn number 92. I'll let you remain seated as we sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. Who Sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Good evening to everyone. Let's open a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for the love that you have for us, Lord. And I just pray your blessing upon this service, Lord. You promised where two or three gather in your name, you'd be in our midst. And we believe that with all our hearts. Bless each and every one, Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's sing another hymn together tonight. <clears throat> hymn number 518. Hymn number 518. Him called satisfied. All my life long I had panted for a drink from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, through his blood I now am saved. Feeding on the husk around me, till my strength was almost gone. Long my soul for something better, only still to hunger on. Hallelujah, I have found him. Whom my soul so long has craved Jesus satisfies my longings Through his blood I now am saved For I was and sought for riches Something that would satisfy But the dust I gathered round me only mocked my soul said cry hallelujah i have found him whom my soul so long has craved jesus satisfies my longings through his blood i now am saved well of water ever springing bread of life so rich i free Unto wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer 
promise to me. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings. Through his blood I now am saved. Amen. Thank you for singing out on that beautiful hymn. Thank y'all. Again, we shall say good evening to everyone. Glad you're here. And God is, he's so good to us. He brought us out tonight. He feeds us every day. No wonder we can sing these wonderful songs. Hallelujah. What a God. What a Savior. Praise the Lord. Okay, in the way of our uh, announcements, I don't think we have any changes. So if you have your... Uh, your bulletin from this past week, then you can see what's on there. And uh, anyone got no, anything else to announce? Okay. If you will, open up your Bible to John chapter 17. Now this is a very, very important chapter of the Bible, of the whole Bible, because this is Jesus' prayer for all of us, and for himself. But uh, this is uh, more or less a prayer saying that he is leaving this world. He's done his job that God sent him to do. He's made disciples. He's added people to the, to the family of God, and now it's time for him to return back to the Father. But he's going to give a, a lot, of, in this chapter, he's going to give a lot of, uh, of uh, instruction, to his uh, disciples, to his followers, and also to us. And we'll get to that as we go through this. So I'm going to start reading in verse 1, chapter 17. And there the Bible says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Don't that show the connection of father and son there? The Lord God in heaven and the Lord Jesus Christ on earth getting ready to go back to the Father. That's a wonderful thing. You know, that's what he expects out of us. He's given us a work to do here, live the Christian life, knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior, and try to lead others to the Lord and to save in grace. And that's what he wants us to do. But he says, the hour has come. And, Father, glorify thy Son, and thy Son also may glorify thee. How did he glorify now? Jesus himself. Well, think about this. His glory came upon him when he was resurrected. And the Father, he, he uh, anointed him, if you want to put it that way, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, you go back to election here. God knows who will and who won't. God is a, a loving, saving God. And through the Son, he will save the whosoever will. All those that will come, he will save. And that's what we need to ponder on. And we need to tell others about that God's desire is that all be saved, that none would, would perish, but that they would all come to saving grace. But they all won't. We know that. We see them every day. And thou hast given him power over, over all flesh, and he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Eternal life. What does that mean? That means when I leave this world, maybe tonight, I'm going to go to the Lord in heaven. I'm going to be a part of the family of God of God, and it'll be that way all through eternity. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a wonderful God we have. And we don't even deserve it. Think about that. It was because what Jesus did on the cross and the resurrection that I can be a Christian, that I can be saved. That is what it's all about. 
And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You cannot separate God the Father and God the Son, because they are one, as he has pointed out. And, of course, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one. And that's what makes up our Christian lives. That was what makes us a part of God's family, and that will go forever. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And that's what he said on the cross. He said, it is finished. It's over with. It's finished. I've done your work. And now I've left my disciples and all those disciples that followed him. I have left, left them to do the work that I have taught them and what they can do for the Father and what they can do for the souls of all sinners that will turn to him. I have manifested thy name unto them, made known, which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, when you think about that, we as Christians, God gave us to him because we would be uh, a part of that eternal life through Jesus Christ. Not, we can't do anything to save ourselves, but it's through Jesus. It's what Jesus did. And it's what he's still doing. It's been, what, over 2,000 years since Jesus went back to the Father. And churches and the teachings of the Lord, they're still going on, and they will until he takes us out of here. Yes, I manifest, made known thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Let me ask a question. How does it make us feel that we were chosen of God? It doesn't matter of what we think we are, but it was all the work of Almighty God in sending His Son. And He it is that will keep us. The devil can't have us because we belong to Him. We may have ups and downs because of the devil. He may throw fiery darts at us. But we know we're held secure in the hands and in the arms of Almighty God. Now they have known that all things whatsoever they has given me are of thee. He taught them that, that whatever they received, it was because of what God had given through Jesus Christ. I've given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they received them. They have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Do we have any problem whatsoever believing that we're Christians because the Father sent the Son? And the Son, his work that he accomplished before he went back to the Father, that is what makes up we Christians because we believe. You cannot be a Christian without believing. You've got to believe. You've got to know that what God said he'll do, he has done, and that he will bring us to himself at the proper time. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Pray not for the world. Why? Well, because the world has rejected. The world has turned away from him. How many of the Jews did Jesus try to show them the right way? And what did they do? They harmed him. They talked about him. They did all they could to down him. But that was not possible. Praise God for that great strength that comes from Almighty God through Jesus Christ right into these old hearts, these born-again hearts that we have. And that's from God. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Let me ask a question. Is there any way that anyone could drag us away from Jesus Christ? It's not possible. It's not possible. Because if we truly have committed ourselves to the Lord, no man, nothing can drag us away from him because he is our our Savior, our Lord, he is the one that sits at the right hand of God right now 
and he's making intercession for me because even though I'm a saved person, individual, belong to God, I still have my trouble with sin. And, and we have to see it that it has to come through him. He makes intercession for me. Boy, I need that. And I'm sure you do too. And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee. Holy Father, keep thou mine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Let me stop right there. Let's, let's talk about something. If he said that we are to be one, that's why they don't need to be any, any uh, uh, grumbling in the church or any one that's against another. But we have to see ourselves as a unit that belongs to God and that he will work through us. What will he do with a, with a, a church that will not unify? How can he do his work? If we're not unified, if we're not seeing things alike because we have the book, we have exactly what he tells us here. Why would we doubt anything or why do we want our way in anything? May we walk with God and may we love one another even as he has loved us. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. Let me see if I can put this strongly. In this church, this is East Bristol Baptist Church. In this church, all those that make up this church, all those that are part of this church, we are equal to one another. We are given power and strength, salvation through Jesus Christ, and we are one. Because Jesus said, me and my Father are one. Well, listen, in knowing Jesus Christ, we are still a part of what they are. They were one, and he's put us in a position to say, we are one together in Jesus. And one day, we will go to heaven, and we'll have the same kind of body, that glorified body that our Lord and Savior has. What a wonderful thing that is. We don't have to worry about the tomorrows. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen to me after death. If I know Jesus, it is as solid as it can be. I'm going to be in his presence. I think about those that have, uh, have gone on, those that have left this world. If they have Jesus in their heart, they're happy. They're in his presence. To be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. And that's... That is the truth, and we need to think about that. It will settle a lot of our issues, and we may see ourselves as one, as those that love each other, those that want to do the work of the church. That is what we are. That's what he's called us to be, and we need to see that, and we need to be able to show love to one another because I know better than anyone else, nor they I. But in Jesus, we are made more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are given everything we need to live this Christian life. And that's what we have to ponder day after day. That's, why, that's what makes a strong church. Some churches, they can't get along and they're strong. But you take East Bristol Baptist Church. I want, personally, as a pastor, I want us to be strongly connected to each other. Uh, concern for one another, loving one another, and willing to do the work of God, each and every one. Because it takes us all. It takes every person being in touch with Jesus Christ to make a strong church. And that's what we want. While I was with them, verse 12, in the world they kept, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. And you know who that was, Judas Iscariot. He, uh, I'm going to read you a verse here in just a minute. A son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Psalm 41, 9. Let me read that. Psalm 41, 9. I'll get there. Okay. Blessed is he, is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. 
The Lord will preserve him, keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him into the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languish. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, the Lord be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. And now we jump over to, to uh, uh, verse 9. And he says, yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. That's some of the saddest words in the Bible. That says when Judas Iscariot walked with Jesus, when he ate of what Jesus gave, he betrayed his Lord. He turned against him. And that is what we have to be so careful about. We need to be careful who we listen to because so many people, they, they try to tell the old, old story of this book right here in their own words. And it's not necessarily what God is saying, but we have to go by the word of God. If we'll do that, we'll be on track. We'll be in his presence constantly. We pray. We seek him. We trust him. And we love one another. And we want to serve him with all our hearts. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that scripture might be fulfilled. See, it went all the way back to Psalm to say that. Uh, the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy Fulfilled in themselves. You want to be happy? Be in Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Uh, receive from him. Pray to him. Glorify his name. And that's what keeps us close to him. Near the cross, if you will. Trusting, obeying, and seeking him. And now he says to the Father, And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. How do you have joy? You have to have a connection with God through Jesus Christ. We may have to suffer things down here, but what about the future? That's where our eyes need to be on, is that we will keep looking at Jesus, the author and finish for our faith, who in the joy given unto him, I don't remember exactly that, but anyway, it's what he has given us. He's given us all the glory that rests in him because we glorify him because of the lives that we live. And that's what he wants. I've given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, let's, let's discuss that just a minute. If you truly are a Christian, the world at large, they're not going to like you, folks. Because you don't see things the way they do. You may not interpret the word of God the way they do. But in Jesus, we will be given all truth. We will be shown the right way. We will trust in him and him only. And he will give us that joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. Isn't that wonderful? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that they should, thou shouldest keep them from the evil. You want peace in your life. Flow like a river. Have your heart right with him. Walk with him. Trust in him. Receive from him. And you will have God's greatest, his joy, his peace. And when we get to heaven, all this, uh, all the things that oppose us down here, that will all be gone. We don't have to worry about that anymore. If you live a Christian life, you're going to have some that's going to stand against you. But if, if you will walk in the ways of God through Jesus Christ, if you'll pray to the Father, if you will commit yourself to him, he's going to show you peace and joy, and that's what he will do for us. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Do you consider yourself, I'm speaking myself too, are we really a part of what this world is all about? We may work in this world. We may do a lot of things in this world. But we are not of the world because uh, Jesus Christ saved our souls. And now we're part of him. We're part of the Father. Sanctify them through thy truth. 
Thy word is truth. You don't have to doubt the word of God. It's truth. It will speak to your heart. It will show you the right way. It will show you the road to take, the right road. And let him God. See, he is our God. He's our comforter. He is our all in all. He's our strong foundation, our mighty fortress. He's all those things to us because we belong to him. We don't belong to the world. We belong to him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Now, let's talk about ourselves there. He has sent us into the world. Now, our world not, but may not be as broad as what the uh, all around the, the, the world itself, but our world is where he has placed us and the work he's given us to do. And he will enable us. He will show us the right way. He will speak to our hearts to talk to someone about Jesus. You get opportunities in this life. I've seen them before. I guess sometimes I've failed, have my mind somewhere else, but God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing men in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what he's called us to do. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself and are set apart, sanctified to set apart, I'm not, I cannot be the way the world is. I've got to separate myself from the world because God's got to work in me. How can I serve God if I'm following the world, if I'm taking the thoughts of the world, if I'm doing all of that? How can I please God? And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Here's some important, a couple of important verses. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us. That's you. That's me. That's what we have received in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ and all down through these centuries that the word has been preached. And we still have copy of the Bible. And it speaks loudly to us. And we have to understand and realize we need this book because it tells us the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's where we came in. You know that? Think about that. That's where we came in is when he spoke the word 2,000 years ago, if you don't look at it that way, now it has come to me. Because of what Jesus has done. And when I prayed, when I was uh, uh, convicted by the Holy Spirit, and I prayed to him, I said, Lord Jesus, I know I'm lost. I know I'm unclean. I ask you right now to come into my heart and, and save me, cleanse me from all sin. And if we would do that, I'll promise you he'll save. He has us that even now that are getting somewhat older. We're still walking with him, aren't we? Sometimes we might get off the road, the track a bit, but he brings us back. But to see that we are on the right path, the road that Jesus laid down, the road that he sent, that God sent his son to lay out for us. Not we ourselves. I can't tell you what's the best thing in life as far as serving in this world, but I can tell you who has the right plan, and that's Jesus Christ. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Wow, that's strong. That has ages that goes behind that, ages and ages, that they may be all be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How can we be a divided church or, or family or whatever if we don't take that verse right there seriously? Because I believe in Jesus. This church believes in Jesus. That's what we t teach. That's what we claim to believe. And that's what we want to show the world. 
That's the right road. There's no other better road. All other roads will lead to this destruction, but we have to look to him. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Are we one with Jesus? That takes, uh, uh, that takes uh, saving grace from him. That takes admitting our sin and receiving from him everlasting life and to be able to, to hide his word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. Is that an easy road? Not always. But, oh, what's the end going to be? That's going to be, a, I tell you, that day is going to be so interesting. That day when he calls us out. No more tears. No more uh, anguish. No more pain. But I'll be in the presence of Jesus Christ. And I will live in that abode forever and ever. God is a wonderful God. God is a God that saves people, that loves people. He is a God that has made everything perfect for us in time. We may have to suffer from some here, but let it be, and we can say praise the Lord. Uh, I, may be, uh, I may not be what I should be, but I do have Jesus in my heart. He'll correct me. He'll, he'll bring me to an understanding uh, through his Holy Spirit. I tell you what, people that don't have the Holy Spirit cannot live a Christian life. Because he made it clear that the Spirit of God will come to us when he went back to heaven. And that's exactly what he's done. I and them, thou and me, that they mayest be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Hey, we have the love of God. We don't have to worry about that. We have the love of God right with us every day, every moment. When we sing these, these beautiful hymns in this church, as we hear our music, we can feel that love of God really, really touching us. And that's the way it should be. Because I tell you, and I've, always, I've heard it said and I still believe it, music is a beginning of a strong worship service. Because we're singing to him praises to God. We're singing about Jesus we're saying it about all that we believe and all we've taken in. That's what we believe. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me because of before the foundation of the world. When was that? That was before we were ever thought of. That was before this world was formed. Jesus said, I was in the presence of the Father way back before that. Some people say that uh, they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. They missed the mark. They missed what it takes to be a God-fearing Christian if they don't believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I've known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Do we believe that? Do we believe that our whole salvation, everything that we claim in our hearts about salvation, about connection with Jesus, do we believe that come right from the lips of God through the Son? Verse 26, and he says, And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it. But the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. That shows deep connection there. We don't have to worry about getting disconnected with God. We may stray, but he'll bring us back, Christian. He'll bring us to a point of sin. I've got to get back with God. I know I've made some errors in my life, but I've got to get back to God because he is my Lord. He's my God, my Lord, my Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that speaks into this, this uh, hard heart at times. And he says, come back to God. Don't walk away from God. If you only seek him, 
He will be found of you. And that's what he wants. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Father, this is strong words. This prayer is the greatest prayer in all the Bible because it tells us exactly what Jesus wants, what he's done, and where he's gone, and he is preparing that place for us. What more could we ever ask for? We could only say hallelujah. What a Savior. What a wonderful God he really is. And I pray for all those that may be listening in on this. I pray your hand just touch their hearts, Father. Lord, if they don't know the Lord, then they, they've lost all. They've missed a mark. They have not gained the greatest thing that God can give, and that's salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for this time, Lord, and we thank you. And we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.